Hello everyone, what's up? In today's video we will see how easy it is to paint and weather workable tank tracks with just a handful of products. Whether you are a wargamer or a scale modeler, if you want to learn more about weathering, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. If you have been following me on social media, you will know that today's video marks a special occasion for me, both as a hobbyist and as a YouTuber. This 116th scale Panzer 1 Breda is my first skill model since, well, since I was in fourth grade. And it is the first model that I spent such a huge amount of time on. It has basically taken me three months to complete it from start to finish. Now, unlike most scale model channels, I'm not going to give you what is known as a full build video. Why? Well, first of all, I think there are better channels for that out there. And secondly, what I think I do best is demonstrate individual weathering techniques. Therefore, I'm going to break down the over 12 hours of footage that I have into smaller chunks, each focusing on one particular aspect of weathering. Today, I'm going to show you every single step I went through when weathering the tracks. Although I'm very happy with the results, my process was quite inefficient. And at the end of the video, I will suggest some time-saving measures. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this series of Panzer 1 videos. And without further ado, let's get started with the tracks. Prior to this stage, I had primed these workable plastic tracks with Alclap 2 Black Primer and then added a base coat of Tamiya Whole Red. For this step, I used ammo gun metal pigment and a makeup brush. The idea is to avoid using a metal paint as such, which is a common trope in Warhammer but results in a very unrealistic finish. Instead, what we want is to give the whole red a slight metallic sheen, representing metal tracks with surface rust and areas where friction has polished the metal. The technique is very similar to dry brushing, as I'm sure you will have noticed by now. What may not be so familiar is the idea of using a makeup brush. I first tried this kind of brush a few months ago, and it really makes a big difference. It's perfect for applying pigments, and I highly recommend it. Take some pigment onto your brush and apply it onto the raised areas, again like dry brushing. As you can see, I give each section of the tracks two passes before moving on to the next. Okay, so this is how the tracks look after just the pigments. I think the effect is very nice, and if you are a war gamer, you could call it a day at this stage if you want. In this second step, my idea was to add some shading and to reduce the contrast between the whole red areas and the metallic ones. For this purpose, I used ammo track wash thinned at around 25%. To apply the wash, I find a large round brush works best. Use a gentle dabbing motion and just work your way along the tracks. Since we're using an enamel wash and not an acrylic, we can always remove or blend some of the wash later if we like. Therefore, you might make a bit of a mess, as I am doing here, but there really is nothing that can go wrong at this stage. Of course, I treated the inside of the tracks as well, but that was hard to capture on camera. The drying time will vary, but I recommend between 2 and 4 hours. Remember how I said that we could blend the enamel afterwards if we wanted? Well, I forgot my own advice and let the tracks dry for several days, which meant that I had to reapply some of the gunmetal pigments because the center of the tracks had really become too dark. No big deal, just a bit of a waste of time. But don't imitate me. So, this is how the tracks looked at this stage. Slowly getting there. The next step is to add some more variety and texture with two different rust pigments. This time, I'm going to apply them in a different manner. First, I'm going to kind of sprinkle them onto the tracks 
and then I'm going to follow this up with a bit of stippling. The first pigment I used was the darker one, aptly named Track Rust. As you can see, I'm going heavier in some parts than in others. This is intentional, as symmetry is one of the main enemies of weathering. I followed this up with medium rust, which is quite a bit lighter. How much you apply is really up to you, but bear in mind that some of it will be dislodged in future stages, so I wouldn't be too conservative. The tracks are now beginning to look how they should, but before we proceed with the mod effects, it's important to make sure that all the previous products are fixed in place. For this I used Ammo Pigment Fixer. To apply it, gently dab the fixer, which is an enamel based product, and let it do its job by flowing into all the recesses through capillary action. Like all the other steps you've seen tonight, this is nice and relaxing. Just take your time. For the mod effects, we're going to be using both enamels and pigments. First, I use Amol Loose Ground, which is a lightly textured enamel product, normally used for mud splatter, and I thinned it about 50% with odorless thinner. I then apply this mixture to the tracks, try my best both to make it random and to concentrate on the outer parts of the tracks. While the enamel was drying, I sprinkled some Europe Earth pigment onto the tracks for some additional texture and tonal variety. Again, I tried to keep things random by not applying it evenly all over the length of the tracks. This step is optional, but I believe it helped improve the overall finish. I noticed that there were some lumps of mud along the center of the tracks, which I didn't really want. I waited around a couple of hours for the mud effects to dry, and then I used a makeup brush, dampened with thinner, to blend the mud effects along the center of the tracks. If you do this, it's important that the brush be only damp, not wet. The enamel thinner will also help fix all the other products in place, so don't be concerned about losing any of the previous work. And now it's time for the last step in our weathering journey, and the one I'm really proud of. You may have noticed that at this stage, we had already lost most of the metallic sheen once again. But despair not, our trusty graphite pencil has come to the rescue. This step not only makes a huge difference, but it's also fun, and the only product required is likely to last you ages. Here's how you do it. Rub the graphite horizontally against the surface of the tracks. Unless your tracks are really fragile, I would apply some vigorous friction here. This will have two effects. One, it will dislodge some of the pigments and mud effects on the raised areas of the tracks. And second, it will polish these to a deep but dark metallic sheen that I find clearly superior to what you get with pigments. So, would I recommend that you follow exactly the same steps that I did? Well, not necessarily. I think the gunmetal pigments were largely redundant. 
To save time and effort, I would suggest instead jumping directly to the rust pigments, perhaps using lighter ones, and then using the track wash both to tone these down and to fix the pigments in place. I would then follow as normal with my steps 6, 7 and 8. In any case, I'm really very happy with the results here and the whole process only took me about an hour, which is a fraction of the time that I needed to actually put the tracks together. So, I hope that you enjoyed this first Panzer 1 weathering video. I have quite a few videos lined up for the next few weeks, including some surprises. In the meantime, if you want to know how to apply an enamel filter, click on the video on the left. And if you want to learn more about weathering pigments, check out the one on the right. Thank you all, and remember, keep it up and weather it out.